Hello viewers and welcome to Novice Talks with me your host Novice Corbis. And the 3rd of March 2022, this marks the five year anniversary since this bad boy came out. You know, going back to before the Nintendo Switch came out, we were coming off the trail of the Wii U era, Nintendo's worst years since they've existed. The future didn't seem all it's up right for them. They had neglected a lot of their franchises. They had lost faith from both the consumers and from their shareholders, from third parties, from just about everyone. It was really only the diehard fans that were still holding on faith in them. And I got into like gaming really at around age 13 or something. That's really when I started following the rumors of the NX, Nintendo's next console that they were already developing. And I remember following these and all the rumors about all the different games leading up through 2014, 2015, 2016. And then we finally guessed closer to the time where the NX is going to be revealed. And we hear about it having detachable controllers, that it can be portable, but also docked. And I remember seeing all this concept out of what that would look like and people's interpretations of that. And then we get to the 2017 uh, presentation in January and we find out, although we found out this bit before, that the NX was officially going to be called Nintendo Switch and I remember that. I remember watching that presentation and just being really excited. The concept was incredible to me. The most mind-blowing thing of all, the fact that you could dock it in TV, but the fact you could do this. We take that for granted now. That, that's just like, you know, a part of life to us now. But this, this was crazy to us five years ago. Like this was never heard of, at least, you know, among Nintendo. Um, so it was crazy to see, you know, detachable uh, controllers that behave like normal controllers, but they're also good for motion. So there was a lot of potential for remaking or porting Wii games because now you had the control, a control scheme that perfectly mirrored the Wii. And thankfully, in the years since, we've seen several examples of Wii games coming back and making full use of motion and regular button control as well. And I think it's amazing that Nintendo continues to provide that option of both settings. And uh, I think that's just the perfect way they're going about that in the best way possible. We had Super Mario Odyssey, which looked amazing. You know, Zelda Breath of the Wild looked stunning. Uh, I remember Fast RMX, funny enough, was the game that stood out to me the most. Uh, this high-speed racing game. It was one of the games I really wanted to get for the Nintendo Switch. It took me about a year to finally get it. But, like, no one was talking about it when it came out. I felt like when I finally did buy it, I was one of the only ones who actually played it. But I had so much fun with that game. Fast RMX is legitimately one of my favorite games on the Switch. I, I hear it's actually a Wii U game that was ported, but... My point still stands, on Nintendo Switch, it is ridiculously fun. But I got my Switch uh, Christmas 2017, going into 2018. Uh, came with Mario Odyssey, actually. Um, I remember having a lot of fun with that. In the beginning, as is usually the case with open world games, I had a lot of fun with it, but I kind of fell off quickly because it began to feel very repetitive to me. Um, and it wasn't like what I was hoping for, which was Mario Galaxy 3. But I did enjoy that game. That's not to say I had a negative experience at all. No, I have like 300 hours in the game. So that'll tell you how much I did like it. Just not as much as the previous 3D Mario games. And then Zelda, you know, I was... Previously, I was never much of a Zelda fan. I played Twilight Princess. I liked it. But it, it was okay to me. It wasn't this big, miraculous thing that everyone else saw it as. I played Skyward Sword briefly on Wii and I liked it but had gripes with it. And other than that, I'd never touched the series. So getting into Breath of the Wild was big for me because I found I loved that game. I was not expecting to enjoy it, but I loved the hell out of it. There was just so much to do. All the different, the different environments, the depth to combat and exploration. You can literally play that game however you want. And it was a perfect example of what the Nintendo Switch is, 
and what it's supposed to signify and mean for the gamer and for Nintendo as a whole. And I think that's part of the why that's part of the reason why Breath of the Wild was so successful in the first place. And then, you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. At the time, people were like surprised. Oh, they're porting the Wii U game and not making a new Mario Kart. I was happy. I was delighted because I played Mario Kart 8 with friends, but I never owned it myself because I never had a Wii U. So this is my first time getting to experience that game. Um, even back then, you know, people thought that in a few years we'd get another Mario Kart. I always knew from that moment that that would be the only Mario Kart game on Switch. Five years later, I'm still right. So, hey. But yeah, no, that started a long trend as well of Wii U games getting ported. And that's controversial depending on your stance. For people like me who never owned a Wii U, this is amazing. We get to play all the games we wanted to play but missed out on. Arguably in better condition now with better features and sometimes with bonus content included, like Pikmin, for example. So for people like me, it's fantastic getting to play the games I've missed. They're basically brand new games to me as well as all the brand new games. And I remember coming up to E3 2017, Reggie fils made a quote in an interview that when all is said and done, Nintendo hopes to have at least one of each of its classic franchises on Switch. And you know, at the time I was hopeful, but I didn't take that too literally. I was like, okay, obviously Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, the usual basics. Uh, possibly a Metroid game, but who knows, maybe not. But no, they, they, so far they're taking that code very literally. We got a Metroid game, we're getting another one. Splatoon, we, we have two Splatoon games on Switch. Mario Strikers is back, Advance Wars is coming back. Like, Nintendo is sticking to their word here. I wouldn't be surprised if Golden Sun or Pikmin or F-Zero or Star Fox make a comeback. I, in fact, I'm almost downright convinced they will show up at some point in the next five years. But, you know, as the years have gone on, that's been a big, really fun part of all of this is getting to see the surprises. That's what really makes this generation and this device stand out to me, the surprises. The games coming out of nowhere that you do not expect, that just leave you jaw-dropped. That's the magic of Nintendo, and that's also the beauty of this generation. And if Nintendo keeps that up for the next five years, this will absolutely go down in history as their best generation. If they keep bringing back old franchises and making them great and all that. But so far, they are on the right track. Uh, the Game Awards 2017, you know, that was something that was really big for me. I didn't watch at the time. In fact, at the time, I didn't even know what the Game Awards were. I just remember people talking about it for ages in the months afterwards and people were asking for this game called Bayonetta 3. You know, people, there was Shimigami Tensei 5, there was Bayonetta 3 and there was No More Heroes 3. And I remember I'm being very curious, I was like, what is this Bayonetta 3 that everyone is asking for? And I watched the, the Game Awards trailer and I also, I get interested and then I watch the trailers for the first two games that are on Switch and I hear that she's a witch and see the guns in her feet and it all seems really creative and weird and amusing and entertaining. And so I decided to give it a chance. I watch a few videos and I decide this looks interesting. I pick up Bayonetta 2, which comes with the first one. And to this date, it's one of the best games on Switch to me. One of my favorite games. I have like 300 hours in it. It's just so much fun. Bayonetta 1 is good as well, but 2 just completely overshadows the first one. I played that for like 6-7 months straight afterward. I love that game to death. I recently started replaying it for the first time in like 3 years because obviously Bayonetta 3 is coming out this year now. Um, so, you know, replaying the first two games, it's weird playing them back to back for the first time. And also, I stopped playing Bayonetta 2 so I could let myself forget some of them. And re-experience it again because I just love the game that much and I want to experience it for the first time all over again. So playing through the game right now has just been amazing because there are things I forgot and I'm experiencing them again. And I'm like, this is why this game is so much fun. And if Bayonetta 3 does anything close to what 2 did, I think we've got a pretty good game on our hands. Obviously, Astro Chain, who could forget that? A hack and slash from Platinum, the guys who made Bayonetta... Uh, 
that was a game that really caught my interest in the beginning, but I did like, I loved it when it came out. It was absolutely fantastic, but I do feel the marketing was a bit misleading because I remember being interested in sort of cop detective aspect of it. Layering that on top of this hack and slash form, it seemed really interesting because you never really, you never play as police in these games. So that was really unique and stood out to me. And it's in the game, yeah, but it, it doesn't play that much of a role. But regardless, Astral Chain was fantastic. Another phenomenal game that really made me trust Platinum as a developer. I have my gripes with the story. I do think the writing in that game was dreadful, to say the least. But overall, Astral Chain was phenomenal. Um, Luigi's Mansion 3. Remember when that came out? I made a loose prediction about that being announced and then it did get announced and I remember just being starstruck at how gorgeous that game is because graphically speaking it's one of the most beautiful games on Switch and obviously you know I, I could go on and on and keep listing games and this isn't even getting into the 3DS games that were still coming out we were getting 3DS games till 2019 and I've talked about that before but since this is about Switch I won't go into any details about those but Going forward, we just keep getting so many amazing Nintendo Switch games. People praised or the Ori games, uh, people recommending them to me because they're Metroidvanias. I give them a shot because they're Xbox games and I don't have an Xbox and they're on Switch. And now they're Ori in the Blind Forest is like my second or third favorite game of all time. So the Switch is full of several examples of just me getting to explore new games outside of what I'd usually play, also playing games in the genres that I like and exploring new series that I've been interested in or have heard of and never got the chance to explore and then falling in love. And that's what's magic about the Switch. That's the best thing about this to me. The, the memories that I've formed over the last five years is hearing about games and franchises and new entries and getting into them and becoming a fan like Bayonetta. That was the first time I ever took a gamble, a wild shot on a franchise, not counting Metroid, and just saying, you know what, YOLO, I'm going to go for it. I don't know if I like it, but I'll buy it anyway. And I fucking love it. Uh, and then you, likewise, Ori as well. So, and I feel like that's only going to keep going on, you know. Maybe Advance Wars gets me on board. You know, Fire Emblem Warriors might get me to into Fire Emblem finally, you know. Pikmin 3 was my first Pikmin game and I got to play it on Switch. There's so many fantastic memories I have with the Switch and old games as well. This is one thing people don't really give enough attention for, but I got to praise them in this. Getting to relive all the classics on Switch, or a lot of the classics, right? Uh, this year, we're going to be playing Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Portal 1 and 2. I never played Portal, but I'm so excited to play it for the first time. The Assassin's Creed games are on Switch now. Slender, The Arrival, that was a really, uh, that was one I was really excited for, even though that's on like everything, so that's no surprise. Um, the Amnesia games are on there. There's just so many classic franchises that are on Switch as well that really don't get enough appreciation. And that's another reason that is a strength to Nintendo's approach and what they've done with the Switch and that is why the Switch has sold over 100 million units. At the start of 2017 we weren't sure if the Switch would do all that well but the concept stuck. People loved it. Nintendo kept making the right games, announcing the right games, fulfilling promises and yeah we've had problems with Joy-Con drift. I've had to repair these controllers like four times but Overall, the experience for the last five years and the memories of what this system has done for Nintendo and for Nintendo fans is not to be downplayed. 100 million units and Nintendo intended, they promised from the get-go in 2017 the Nintendo Switch would be around for 10 years and they're sticking to that promise. And that guarantees, that absolutely guarantees that the Nintendo Switch will become the best-selling console in the world when all is said and done. How fucking crazy is that? Think about it. Nintendo hit lightning in a bottle twice. Something nobody said they would do. To go from the incredible heights of the Wii to the just depressingly low disaster that was the Wii U to even further heights with the Switch. Like, what an incredible resurgence. That is the best way I can describe this generation for Nintendo. A resurgence. 
a return to form for their classic franchises, a return to form for like innovation and creativity and just everything you love about Nintendo all in one place. The handhelds, home console, the games, the gimmicks and features. The Nintendo Switch truly is something incredible to me. It's not my favorite console of all time, but I have a lot of really cool memories with it and I just love this thing to death. And I'm so happy that it's so incredibly successful and all the games we've gotten on it. You know, Metroid Dread, that, that canceled Nintendo DS game. We finally got it last year. Like 2017 me never saw that, well technically I did because I made a weird theory video about it coming out for the 3DS in 2021. I was wrong about the system, but I was right. You know, Metroid Prime 4 we could be getting, you know. There's so many other possibilities. Because Nintendo has used all of their main franchises multiple times over now, we're getting into the third into the territory where we could definitely be seeing Golden Sun, F Zero, Pikmin 4, any other classic franchise, Kid Icarus, you know? There's so many games that are still yet to come, and we have no idea how the next five years are shaping up. And it's really exciting. I am really excited and optimistic for the future of Nintendo. And I love my Switch and I will continue to love it and enjoy like all the games I have, as on, I have on it for the years to come. But yeah, that's just my experience, my stories with the Nintendo Switch since 2017. What are your thoughts and opinions? Let me know down in the comment section below. Did you pick up the Switch on launch year? What are some of your favorite games, favorite memories? Did you get into any new franchises? What do you think about just Nintendo's attitude toward new games, older games, Wii ports? I want to hear everything you have to say down in the comment section below. And yeah, with that all said, thank you all for watching and please subscribe. Novus Corvius out.